Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a map called Rock Heap. And this map actually comes with a few custom vehicles, so we're going to start off with one of those custom vehicles. It's the Ramrod, which is a modification of the D-Series that actually has a custom part on the front to allow it to ram things better, which we will be sure to test later on, but there's something really cool about this map i got to show you first. It's what happens when you go into the lava. So you can just barely see the lava right there. It is a huge lake of lava, and if you dare go into it, your vehicle explodes to bits. I thought that was pretty cool just seeing your vehicle get exploded by touching the lava. Now, there are also small puddles of lava around the map, and if you touch those, it's a little bit less severe than the big lake of lava, but it still damages your car a good amount. So, one small puddle is uh, this one right here, and I'll show you exactly what happens. So, we go right over that. It pops the tires. We catch on fire, but we can keep driving. It's just popped tires. But when you're driving in an area like this, just pop tires can be annoying. So we're just going to go ahead and reset this thing. And now let's try to go more than 10 seconds without falling in the lava, which should be pretty easy to do considering I was trying to fall in the lava the last few times. And as we drive along, there are a few details I want to show you. The first one is the lava is so hot, you can see the heat coming off of it just like you can in real life. So if you stop right here, you can see it nice and clearly if you look at the lava and the rock right there. You can see everything looks all wavy because of the different air pressures because of how hot it is. At least, I'm pretty sure that's what causes that kind of look to it. I wanted to point that out because I don't recall seeing that in any other map. So we'll go ahead and keep on driving. You can see it on the road a little bit too as we were driving right there. Another cool thing is if you go over an area like this where it has lava, and this one actually has a little ramp on it, so hopefully we can do this safely, the car gets all lit up in red from the lava, and then as we leave the lava, it becomes less red again. Looks pretty cool as you do that, and... Let's see if we can uh, save this thing from that awkward uh, angle I have going. Yes, we can. Now, there are a lot of alternative paths here. You see, there's one right here. What we're going to do is we're going to do two runs of the place. One run where we always go left and another one where we always go right. And by doing that, we should see the majority of the roads. There might be a few here and there I missed, but it'll get you a good idea of most of them. Now, this one goes over the one that's uh, the other option. And we're cruising along, no problem here. Eventually, though, we're going to want to wreck this thing so we can get a different truck because there are actually two custom trucks for this map. So uh, let's wreck it right over this hill without touching anything. It's like, why be how are you going to do that? Watch this. Lava! And we're just going to sit right in it, and there we go. Truck is wrecked. Oh, 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 can it stop in time? Yes, just barely. Actually, there's also something cool you could do here, but uh, first off, let me go ahead and swap out the truck. There's another one called the Performance, and it says, don't step on the cat's tail. And I thought maybe it would have, like, a tail attachment or something to it, but it doesn't. It's just a regular truck with a design that has a cat on it. So anyways, what I want to do is I want to get this thing on fire, but not completely ruined. So we just want to hit the little lava lake. And then, oh no, I'm on fire. What could I possibly do to solve this? Well, if we just drive up the road a teeny tiny bit, here is the solution. Water. And just like that, we're not on fire. Okay, well, we're still on fire a little bit. We got to go a little bit deeper in the water. So how about if we go up on the hill a bit? There we go. We're now lo no longer on fire. But our tires are still popped, so the steering is terrible. So we're just going to say goodbye, truck. Fly off a cliff and crash. And it's going to do just that for me. Go ahead and give it a watch. And it went right through the water. I don't think the water actually did anything there. And then we can go ahead and reset it. And now we gotta drive along this area, which isn't exactly the easiest thing to do because it's kind of steep and we don't have much area to get up to speed, so we might fall on the inside, but just barely enough power not to. Okay, great. Gotta jump right here. Let's do a quick hop. Try not to damage anything too bad. Well, the, the kitty is angry because the hood just lifted up, but we're fine otherwise. Maybe a little bit of a pull. Okay, a lot of pull to the left. And we gotta have precision right here, of course, because we gotta do that. And then we gotta do a big old jump. All right, we made it cleanly even with a damaged pickup truck, so that's a pretty great success if you ask me. We can keep on driving along through this area nice and easy because we don't need precision because the road's so wide. Although we need a little bit of precision not to crash into the sides right here. We'll just slow it down a tad. And then flooring it once again. Also, we got these areas where it's like green. It doesn't do anything different than water, but it looks cool. And we're going to fly and destroy the truck right here. I'm almost certain this is going to destroy it. Really? It didn't have radiator damage earlier? I am shocked. Actually, this thing might still drive, maybe? If it stops rolling ever? Let's see. Yeah, it'll drive still. Now, this area, though, there's, like, a lot of different ways you can go, kind of through buildings and stuff. Uh, well, here's one way. You roll half the distance, and then you don't have any choice of direction. Not exactly the way things are planned, but I'm just shocked this thing still drives. Alright, we're gonna go through this tunnel area right here. 
Careful not to crash into the wall! Stop pulling to the left, bad pickup. Stay to the right. Okay, now you don't have to worry about it pulling to the left. At least as much as before. Now I still gotta worry. Can we fit under that log? Sort of. Can we kind of fit? And right here, we kind of got to do something weird. So I want to go to the left, but I can't go to the left because the next section requires a lot of speed. So actually, I guess what I could do is I could still drive the left section. Then we also do the right one afterwards. And this truck just needs to be put down. It is beat up so badly and it is still trying so hard to drive. We're going to wreck it completely right here. All right, now we have basically no steering. Maybe it'll catch fire. Great. Yeah, it's so badly beat up. It's like the wheels are about to fall off. <laughs> well... They weren't about to fall off, they just straight up did. So now I'll reset this thing, go through the left side, then we're gonna go to the right, go up the hill and gain speed. Oh my goodness, that was getting a little messy. Thought I might wreck my truck right there even though I didn't want to. Which, you know, does sometimes happen. Most of the time I only wreck it when I want to. So up the hill and then down the hill and hopefully this will give us enough speed to do the jump that's coming up. So we're going up to about 80 already, that looks pretty promising except we're we're not upshifting. Come on, truck. Oh, no. We're only going like 85. That was not enough because of the truck's transmission. But look, we pulled through. And we don't need to have a drivable vehicle anymore because that's a lap. That is a complete lap of the place. And now let's just go ahead and dump this thing into the lava because it is pulling to the side a little bit. Kind of nice roll into the lava. Parts flying everywhere. And uh, I want to show you guys a cool little trick. So if you want to be able to drive on the lava, just hit insert. It'll reset your car on top of the lava and you can drive on it without any problems. Like we could just drive on this thing forever. There's only one rule you got to follow. Never leave the lava. If you leave the lava and then you try to come back, your car will still catch on fire. So for example, we left the lava. Now don't touch it again because if you try to go back onto it, the lava rejects you and you're back on fire. So now let's go ahead and bring this thing back to where we started. And we'll swap this out for another vehicle that comes with the map. We're going to get the Bishu Kovet called the Zero. And it says Magic Nut Bar not included for the description. Now this is not the ideal vehicle for here. It's still in a Bishu Covet, so it's front wheel drive and it doesn't have that much ground clearance. It has a little bit more than normal, but still not nearly as much as the pickup truck. So there you go, that's what it looks like and off we go. Uh, kind of slow speeds until it actually gets moving. So if we want to do a lap with this thing, it requires careful driving with precision, which are words that are never used to describe the way I drive. So we'll see how long it lasts until I wreck it. And I've already just bounced it kind of hard right there and it could have spun out, which would have been amazingly fast. And we're going to always go right at the splits this time. But you'll notice there's some places where that doesn't exactly work out. Like right here, well, there's a split and then another split. So if I go right, we're going to miss that mud area right there. And uh, unfortunately, we just will miss that. There are small sections like that that will be missed. Over here, we have this hill we could climb to if we had a more off-roady vehicle. And we could get back up to uh, the top of this bridge, which is the bridge we crossed in the first run. And now I'm stuck in the mud going like three miles an hour. Come on, Kovet, get your butt moving. Uh, it actually did get moving pretty good. We're up to 60 miles per hour. I did not expect that. I figured we'd go maybe like 20 through that whole thing. I think the actual speed was more like 40. That's probably why it was uh, confusing me a bit. Anyways, right here we have to do something a little bit weird because the roads crossed over. If you want to go to the right side, we have to go way out here to get to the right side. Just to go into that little piece of wood. That was it. That was the only reason we had to go that far out, basically. Over here we get to do something interesting though, we gotta go way to the left to make sure we avoid the lava, but then we gotta hug it in to make sure we get to the top of the roof right here. There is that road, it's kinda hard to see it until the last second. So I wanna go about 50 miles per hour I think. Yeah, it looked pretty smooth. And then right here I'm gonna go ahead and wreck this car up, and then swap it for yet another one. So full speed ahead, and uh, can we hit these rocks? Nah, we, we can dodge those, I wanna go in that green stuff. Do into the green stuff! Or not. <laughs> I guess we're not going into the green stuff. Fine. You know what? Into the lava. Yep, that worked. We are now on fire. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, get the car I wanted to drive, which is an Ibishu Pessima. And it's the old Ibishu Pessima, not the new one. And we want the one called Sakura. And it's going to spawn up on fire. There's nothing I can do about that, but I could real quickly hit insert. And then there's no more fire. We could just drive right out of here like some sort of crazy lunatic who doesn't believe in temperatures. Up we go. And then we're going to have to actually backtrack a little bit here because the next section does need a decent amount of speed. And I'm not exactly sure how fast this thing is because I kind of forgot. Seems like it would have been fast enough where we might not need to do this, but better safe than sorry. So now we'll do the 180 and then we're going to go up the wall right there. You can see how the, those arrows are. That's not a sign. 
that is a road you can go up and drive on. You even see there like skid marks leading up to it. So right up onto it like that. And then we're going to go back down to a more regular area right here. And we're going to drive the slow through this section. Because this section can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Like you'll just be driving way faster than you should. But you don't realize it until it's too late. And you're upside down crashing into everything. So just going about 80 right here. That's almost too fast. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. Actually that was probably a good thing I slowed it down. I made it nice and smooth when the... Uh, road got bumpy right there and we're gonna all go all the way to the right which means we get to go over the lava not a jump or anything it's just a bridge but we get to go over it then we go up the road a little bit and then we gotta go down the road oh we're flying yeah we're fine we're fine let's see how's the car driving well i can't quite tell yet because we've turned okay it is pulling a little bit but i can manage that just a little bit when it starts to pull a lot that's when i'll reset it of course though it's pulling to the left and it's like oh well you gotta go to the right how inconvenient. But we can make it uh, easy enough. And this time, we're going to go way up on the wall on this corner. Because that sounds like a fun thing to do. Oh, not this corner. This corner. It's a little bit farther than I thought it was. So we're going to go way up on the wall and try to go as fast as we possibly can without hitting that rock. It sticks out a little bit. That looked fine. And then once again, we're going to go to the right side. Right side. Come on, car. Stop going left. You know what? You'll be going left in a second because it looks like there's a left up ahead. And I think that's the last corner anyways. So go left. Be happy. Do whatever you want. There you go. And across the finish line. And uh, do whatever you want. I don't care anymore. Ooh. Nice way to uh, rip the door off. I was hoping you'd fall in the lava, though. So maybe I'll give you a little bit of help to get you into the lava. Just like so. A little bumpy. And hot fire everywhere. So now let's go ahead and bring this thing back to where we started again. And the last custom vehicle that we're going to be taking a look at is one for the 8 series called the Varjack. And it says it's an island veteran. So we'll spawn this thing up and then we'll just drive it around some. And I think we're actually going to go in the reverse direction of where we're pointed since I've done the normal direction twice. So quick 180 right here. Now there are two other vehicles that you can choose from, but they're not as nicely set up they don't have a thumbnail or information about them it's just kind of like oh here's a car configuration as well because it's used in scenarios that come with this and there are quite a few scenarios so many in fact that these scenarios will be their own video but for now we're just going to focus on the map itself and the cars that come with it and driving on the map so 8 series is going along quite nicely now i've actually never driven this thing in reverse usually i would do at least one run to see if it's a viable thing but not this time we're just going to go ahead and Attempt it and see what happens and uh, we're gonna hit that log because my car is way too tall And I have no idea which direction. I'm really going now I'm just kind of just going whichever road I see not thinking about it So we're gonna get a mix of going left and right here And I want to do this all in one attempt, but I expect it to actually take two or three You know there's things you want and then there's actual expectations two completely different things You know I want a billion dollars. I don't expect to get anywhere near that Oh, what's over here? Oh, no. Yep, yep. I saw that coming the second I kind of dipped. It was just, it was too late. I couldn't react. All I could do was yell, oh, no. All right, so there's one car down. Going to bring it back up because it didn't get too damaged in there to actually look at it. Oh, hold on, car. That was a little too close to the edge, don't you think? Let's go on the green stuff right here just because. It's so green. Look how green it is. It's gross. It's really gross looking. Uh, hey, it doesn't drown the engine apparently. That's interesting. Or maybe it's just like a certain depth that it doesn't. I don't know. It's weird because the car was drowning. Anyhow, let's go ahead and continue driving this H series. We're going to go up the hill, which shouldn't be too hard for this thing. It has a decent amount of power. Like I'm never driving this thing thinking, man, it needs another 100 horsepower. Because, I mean, look, we're going 60 miles per hour already, up to uh, almost 80, pretty much 80, 80 miles per hour right here through some rough terrain, which probably shouldn't even be driven at 80 miles per hour in the first place, seeing the way the car bounces. Like, I know soon enough I'm going to whack up this thing, but hey, so far it's intact, so keep flooring it. That is always a great strategy until, well, you need to buy a new car. And then you realize this was a very poor strategy. And I feel like I'm going to crash it right in this area with all the logs, because I don't know where the logs are exactly... Come on, boop it! Boop it! <laughs> it booped the edges. And all I mean by that is it got hit, but it didn't get damaged bad. We can keep on going, no problem. It looks a little beat up, but it feels like it's driving okay-ish. Like, it's not driving straight, but I can manage again. 
Just like all the other times, usually I'll damage it. And it's like, but I can manage. I can manage. All right, we're going to go to the left here, and then we're going to go to the right and try not to hit that rock. Woo! I see, you know, there's that section I was telling you about. You could try to go up with a uh, truck. We're going to try to go down it with this, and I'm not exactly sure if you actually can. It just looks like you can, I think, but let's check for sure. So, nice and careful. Oh, don't roll over on me. Don't you dare roll over on me. All right, we straightened it out. Except, where do we really go from here? Hmm. I think maybe this is actually as far as you could go going downhill unless you are a little bit more risky with your movements. Yeah, like right here, I can't seem to maneuver over this. It's a little bit too tall for this car. You need something with a lot of ground clearance to actually get over that. So, um, I don't see any other way we could go. We'll just go ahead and bring this thing back up the hill. And I'll show you the fun way to get down the hill. So we're up to the top. We're going to go a little bit farther. And then, easy tactic. Floor it and go off the corner and watch it fly. Add some flying and don't land upside down. That's landing upside down, I guarantee it. Yep. I don't know, just the way it hit, it's like that's gonna land upside down. I know it. Alright, we'll reset it and then we're just gonna drive it over to the lava pit and we're done. Maybe on this one we'll try to like hit the barrier that stops you from going in the lava, see if it helps at all. Because I noticed you can kind of hit it, like those blockades you can hit, but not the bright orange part. Anyways, till next time, this is YBR, there's the fire, and I'll see ya! Oh, hi, little tire, where you going? I take that back, I actually just realized I forgot to do the ramrod testing, so we're gonna do a few collisions with a normal car, then we'll do a truck-to-truck -truck collision, so we'll start off by smashing up the Sakura with the uh, eight-time slow-mo right there. That looks pretty good, that was a almost 60 mile per hour crash, and everything but the ramrod on this looks pretty good, and this car looks pretty beat up so we're gonna just park it in a good area to hit it again so like right there should be good and let's see how's this thing drive after that impact feeling pretty good might pull ever so slightly to the right but not a concern that's so little it's not even a concern anyways up for round two let's see how it does with a head-to-head -head collision so here we go 50-ish miles per hour again and then that is actually helping it a lot, it seems like, because that's two collisions, and the only thing that really looks damaged is the ramrod. I mean, the only way to know for certain is to do a truck-to-truck -truck collision, but before we do that, I want to do a high-speed collision. So we're going to go ahead and park that there, and we're going to take the pickup truck, and we're going to drive it way up the hill so we can go 80 miles per hour before impact, I'm hoping. And on this one, I'm going to need to reset the truck beforehand because it is pulling a decent amount which makes it hard to control at those speeds so right there looks pretty good we'll save this spot go down here reset this guy to be fresh as well and then attack mode activated just gotta be careful to maneuver out of here without crashing perfect and full speed ahead and hopefully we get up to the 80 miles per hour i desire we're already up to 60 that's promising 70 and it's gonna be about 78 so set wait is it is it gonna be 80 Nope, 79. One off from 80, but I'll take it. And uh, looking at the truck after the impact, it doesn't look bad, but I think it got stuck. Yeah. It is definitely stuck right here. That's kind of annoying. So I'll reset the truck, and then we're going to swap this for a different pickup truck. We're going to get the other one that comes with the map. And then we're just going to make it where they do a head to head collision. So I got to do a little bit of aligning with this thing real quickly. Just do a 90 degree rotation so it's pointed in the direction the other truck's coming. And put the parking brake on and then I don't know where this guy's rolling to, but now I know where he's driving to. So off he goes, full speed. 60 miles per hour. This is not going to be as fast because we weren't as far up the hill. That's okay. So here we go. And crash. That's actually a lot of damage on mine, but that wasn't a, a head-on collision. They're kind of offset. So one side is going to be damaged more than the other. So what we need to do is look at the same side. So we look at the less damaged side on that one and the less damaged side on this one and then kind of compare them back to back. Pretty similar, but it looks like that truck's a little less damaged. Cool. All right. That'll do it. Till next time, this is YBR. I'll see ya.